Good afternoon, Manuel. How are you, sir? Good afternoon. Fantastic, fantastic. Mr. Brennan, good morning, sir. Who else are we going to have joining us? Okay. So the faces are logging in this morning, which is wonderful to see, which is wonderful to see. Fantastic, fantastic. I have, as usual, uh, an interesting topic for us today, guys. An interesting topic for us today. I'm going to let us wait for a minute or so and see who else is going to roll on in. So how's everyone doing today? Give me a thumbs up if everyone's doing okay. Give me some yes in the chat box if you're all good. Excellent, 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 excellent. Okay. Um, have we all fed our minds this morning? Okay, okay. So we've nourished the minds, we've nourished the minds. Good, good. Excellent, excellent. Feeling excited about today, feeling excited about today. It's a quite significant topic that I want to discuss today. Quite significant topic today. So I'll give us another 30 seconds or so, and then I'm going to roll on in, and we're going to have a very interesting conversation today, gentlemen. It looks as though it's going to be a gentleman's chat today. <laughs> it's looking that way. Nothing is ever wrong with that. A gentleman's chat is always a good thing, right? Okay, let's roll on in, let's roll on in, let's roll on in. So, so guys, if I could help you understand the way to live a fulfilled life. Give me a thumbs up if that would be very, very useful. If we could live a completely fulfilled life. Well, there is a secret way to do this. I'm sure many people know, but um, I don't know how many people really pay attention to it. There are six human needs, not six human wants, six human needs and i'm going to run through these today um give me a thumbs up if anyone's already aware of these six human needs if you've come across them before if you've got a good understanding this is good this is good that means i have a topic that everyone is kind of unaware of so i'm going to run through the six human needs so grab a pen grab a paper write them down because there are going to be some that are critical to being able to live a fulfilled and a happy life. And it's almost regardless of money. Yes, of course, money helps, but it's regardless of money. It's not money that meets these needs. In some aspect, money helps, um, but not always, not always. Okay. So human need, number one. And as I said, not human want. These are six human needs. Human need number one is the need for certainty. As a human, we have an absolute need for certainty. Whether that be in your daily routine, whether that be certainty that you've got a, a roof over your head and food on your table. There are many ways to fulfill this need, but certainty is an absolute must. As I said, many people go, go about it in different ways whether it be through your job, through your career, through just your, your own personal values. But as I said, it could just be through, you might have the same routine every single day. So you wake up and you have certainty that you know what you're gonna do. You might enjoy reading and you might enjoy reading a certain type of book or work, watching a certain type of film. There are so many different ways that people go about acquiring certainty because it's one of these needs that absolutely has to be met. But as we know, our creator, whether you believe in you created by God or by the universe, whatever the scenario be, whoever or whatever created us, clearly has a great sense of humor, because as well as certainty, <laughs> we have a need for, a need for uncertainty. That is human need, number two, uncertainty. So, Think about it, you might get certainty from being in a relationship. And what happens if you're in that relationship and everything is routine and you know everything that's gonna happen? Eventually, you get bored, right? Because you have a need for uncertainty. 
uncertainty variety. You like to do different things. Let's think about women. Generally, women love surprises, right? And it's not just a female thing. Men love surprises too. Let's be honest, guys. If it's a nice surprise, you like a surprise. <laughs> we don't like those surprises that um, put a sadness on our face, those unexpected bills. We're not really keen on those. But as I said, there is a need for certainty as well as uncertainty. So we do so many things to create uncertainty. You might have, I don't know, a blind date because it creates uncertainty. You might love watching a certain type of movie. But how many times have you watched the same film? Give me a thumbs up if you've watched the same film before on more than one occasion. Think about this. A lot of the time you might watch the same film because you've got certainty that it's a good film, but then you might be hoping that you've forgotten enough so it's still going to provide a level of uncertainty, right? The characters in the movie. You might want to watch a certain type of film so you have certainty, but the characters in the movie, they're the ones that are going to die. So you still get that level of uncertainty, but you're certain you're safe. So once again, it's meeting two of your needs. You might, I don't know, have a very stressful environment. People do all sorts of things to uh, achieve certainty or uncertainty. Some people might smoke and they say it relaxes them. So they might be in a stressful environment and they smoke more because they feel as though the smoking relaxes them. It helps them feel better. So they are always meeting their needs. You have to remember whenever people do things, whether it be consciously or unconsciously, we're always trying to serve and meet specific needs. So those are the first two. You've got certainty and uncertainty. You've got certainty and you also need variety in your life because without variety, you become very, very bored. Life becomes Groundhog Day. It's the same over and over and over. And none of us could live our lives doing the same thing day in, day out. The monotony alone will drive you crazy. So you need certainty and you also need uncertainty. What are the other needs? Well, human need number three is the need for significance. You have to, for whatever reason, feel significant in life. And I was doing some research and I was understanding what people's thoughts were about the human needs. And someone raised a very, very interesting topic to me and it kind of made a lot of sense. That violence has been around for so many years, from, from the beginning of time. Because violence, believe it or not, meets a number of human needs. Let's think about people that go out and commit robberies. They're certain that they're gonna be the person in charge of that situation, for example, if they've got a gun. The need for uncertainty is also met, because every situation is gonna be different. But let's be sure, if you pull out a gun and point to someone's head, you're feeling significant, right? They're certainly going to do as they're told, so you're feeling at that point like you're the boss. So immediately there, three of the human needs are met straight away. But they're met through such a crude act, violence. But ultimately, violence serves so many of the human needs. And it's sad, but it's true. And we don't always do things for the logic or for the good feeling. A lot of the time things are done just to meet human needs. And it is absolutely crazy. My apologies, guys. <laughs> this is what happens when the doorbell rings unexpectedly and you've got a dog that kind of doesn't like the doorbell. Uh, anyway, that will have to wait. See, that was the need for uncertainty. I didn't know that was gonna happen. I was certain I was gonna come to this call today I was uncertain that the doorbell was going to ring and could not provide that level of variety. But I'm still feeling significant because guess what? I'm still in control. The doorbell doesn't have to get answered if I don't want it to. So three of my needs have been met there straight away. Human needs are met in a variety, a myriad of different ways. So what's human need number four? The need for connection. 
And let's think about it. A relationship and a good relationship can in theory meet all four of those needs. You can have certainty, for example, that you're certain you're in a relationship, you're certain you've got a partner. You have that variety and that spark between you, so you've then got a level of uncertainty because it's not the same every day. You've got significance because your partner values you, your partner makes you feel good, your partner shows an element of need, so you feel significant to your other partner. And you've got that connection between the two of you. So effectively, a good relationship meets four needs immediately. And as I said, everything we do is all about serving and making sure our needs are met. Is this making sense so far, guys? Give me a thumbs up. Give me some yeses in the chat box if it's making sense so far. Yeah? So whatever we do at any given time is always about meeting our human needs. And remember, these are needs. These are not wants. These are absolute necessity. These are needs. We cannot survive without meeting our needs. So every single thing we do, think about it. What needs is it actually serving? What needs is it actually meeting? Because when we're meeting our needs, that is ultimately when we feel the best. And the more needs we can meet, is the better we're gonna feel. So as I said, we've got four already. We've got certainty, we've got uncertainty, we've got significance, we've got connection. Those are the four needs that are easy to meet. But it's the last two needs that are pivotal. And it's the last two needs that will give you that fulfillment in life. Need number five is the need for growth. Because how many times have you heard it? If you're not growing, what are you doing? You're dying, right? That's been said so many times. So you have to find something that's going to contribute growth to your life. Whether that be learning a new skill, whether that be diving into a new challenge, a new task, a new process. Whatever the case may be, when these needs are being met, as humans, we start to achieve a level of fulfillment. And growth is an incredible need that when it's been truly met, it makes such a difference. You see, the thing is, very few people actually meet the needs five and six. That's why so many people, unfortunately, end up feeling um, unsatisfied with life. Because they're meeting four of the core needs, but the two needs that really make the difference aren't actually being met. So what other things can you do to grow? Give me some ideas in the chat box for some other things you can do to grow. Because bearing in mind that growth is so important. Oh, Richard. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. But yeah, bearing in mind that growth is so important. Let's start thinking about some things that we can do to grow. When you study, does that contribute to growth? When you take on board a new project, does that contribute to growth? When you, there you go, taking on something bigger than ourselves, absolutely beautiful, Phil. When you step outside of your comfort zone, does that contribute to growth? Because you see, you can't grow in your comfort zone. In your comfort zone, it's very easy to become complacent. You may well be hitting four out of your six human needs, but those aren't the needs that really make the difference. It's when you're tapping into that growth, and I'm gonna to touch on the last one in just a moment, but it's when you're tapping into that growth, as well as meeting your other four needs, that life starts to become magical. 
you start to have that sparkle in your eyes. You start to have that belief that things are really, really going your way. You start to wake up with a pep in your step. You start to wake up with a purpose. Because when you're achieving your purpose, <laughs> blind date. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's definitely uncertainty. Um, growth, possibly. I don't know. Where it depends on whether or not you, you connect, right? But yeah, when you're starting to do what you love to do, when you're achieving your purpose, that is when you start to feel magnificent. When you wake up and you feel energized every single day because what you're doing is fulfilling so many of your needs. Now we hit need number six. And as I said, growth in combination with this need is what leads to a truly fulfilled, a truly magical life. And the last lead is for contribution. And it's funny, Phil, you actually, whether or, not, whether or not it was intentional, but you unwittingly have hit on something very, very big there because you've taken on something that is bigger than ourselves. When we make our why bigger than we are, when our why is to serve others, not only do you grow, but you feel a massive sense of contribution. Let's think about this. As humans, we are selfish beings. We have to put ourselves first. But how many would agree that when it comes to doing things for those that we love or care about, we will go much further for them than we will for ourselves? Give me a thumbs up if that makes sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box if that really makes sense. For the ones we love and care for, we will do much more and we'll go further for them than we will ourselves. So with that being said, if we can combine our why into serving others, think about how many of your needs you're going to meet then. If your why involves, for example, a project or something you have to do that is going to allow you to grow, but it's bigger than you are, it pertains to serving other people, that's an incredible thing. Because, okay, let's wrap all of this up. Let's put all of this in context. So, for example, you've taken on a new project. So you've got a level of certainty that you're working on a new project. But because a project's something that you haven't done before, you've got a level of uncertainty. There's definitely going to be variety involved. Are you going to feel significant? if you're doing something worthy and worthwhile. Give me some yeses in the chat box if, if this is all making sense. Give me some thumbs ups if this is all making sense. So we've got significant so far. And because no man is an island, if you involve people in your project, are you gonna feel a sense of connection? Yes, give me a yes. So at that point, because it's new to you, you're outside your comfort zone, so are you going to be growing? I'd certainly say so. And if ultimately the why is to serve people, even if it just be your family, your loved ones, are you going to feel that sense of contribution? Absolutely yes. Guys, those are the six human needs. They're not six human wants. If you can meet and serve those needs, I promise you, you will live a fulfilled, a happy, uh, a, a complete life. Think about this. 100% Richard, that's exactly what the prior two business should be, solving problems for others. But think about this, think about how many people become extremely wealthy and then decide they're gonna kick back and retire. So they've got all the money in the world, they retire, they're no longer doing anything, their sense of uncertainty goes because their days become mundane, so they become bored. They're no longer growing because they're not doing anything different and they're not contributing. So they've got all this money, 
but yet so many of their needs aren't being met. That's why you find incredible businessmen and businesswomen generally like to stay in business. Why do they do this? Because it helps fulfill so many of their needs. And then why do you think it is that incredible business people, funny enough, become huge philanthropists because they are helping other people, which really fulfills their need for contribution. And as I said, contribution and growth, they're the two biggest needs. When those two needs are being met, you will find almost as a byproduct, many of the other four will also be met. But contribution and growth, when those two are being met, you are feeling absolutely fulfilled. Think about how many people are rich and miserable. They've got all the money in the world, but they are miserable. And they might be miserable based on their circumstances or their personal circumstances, but you will find if you drill down deeper, the misery becomes because some of their needs are not being met. If you stop growing, you're now slowly dying. If you're no longer contributing, you're just making money. You might not still have that, you might not have that sense of variety, that sense of uncertainty. You have to really be careful about what you're doing in life. And you have to assess whether or not you are meeting your needs. Because when your needs are being met, that is when your life becomes magical. It's that level of understanding. And as I mentioned to you earlier, I asked at the beginning who was aware of these six human needs. This sheds light on what is really important in life. This massively, massively sheds light on what is really important in life. Because when you understand how to meet these needs consistently throughout whatever you're doing, life takes on a different complexion. All of a sudden, life really, really looks different. And it's simply a case of you going ahead and meeting your needs. Can you see, guys, how this doesn't necessarily revolve around money? Richard put a great one at the bottom. He put a volunteer. You could do voluntary work. That doesn't mean you're going to get massively paid, but yet you're meeting all six needs. That could be very, very easily done. That's why some people are living the simplest lives, but are yet so truly happy. Because money doesn't provide happiness, guys. Money only provides choices. And absolutely, yes, money is a necessity in this world. And when you have more money, you have more choices. So you can effectively make parts of your life easier. But your happiness comes from meeting your human needs. Your happiness comes from understanding how you need to operate as an individual. When you are meeting your needs, money just adds to that. Money just adds fuel to the fire. So would it be fair to say that the most important thing we need to do is find activities that are going to meet our needs first? And then if money is a byproduct, surely, surely that leads to a very, very fulfilled life where you've got an abundance of choice because you have money, but you've made sure that your activities that you're contributing to on a daily basis that are hitting your, 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 your human needs of certainty, uncertainty, significance, connection, growth, and contribution. Guys, so simple, but yet so true. You hit these human needs, and life takes on a complete different, uh, complete different complexion life all of a sudden starts to look very, very different. 
Give me a thumbs up if this is valuable. Give me a thumbs up if this makes a whole lot of sense. Give me some yeses in the chat box if this makes sense. The six human needs. Guys, you know, I love when we come together in the morning and I'm able to give you things that are of value. I'm able to give you things that are worthy and worthwhile. Because whenever we can expand our mind, whenever we can put new information in our mind, that in itself is a bonus. That in itself contributes massively to growth. Because learning, when you're learning, you're always growing. <laughs> absolutely, Manuel, absolutely, absolutely. Whatever situation you think about, these six needs need to be present, absolutely. My friend, because you know what, when you make sure your needs are the biggest priority, that leads to fulfillment and happiness in your life. Guys, unfortunately, I'm gonna to have to cut today short a few minutes early because I've got a call right after this and I need to change my Zoom channel. But guys, what can I say? It's been an absolute pleasure as always. I always thank you for your time because you choose to spend this time with me. You don't have to be here. But as ever, I just want you to understand that all can and will be achieved one step at a time. And as long as we continue to choose to grow, as long as we make choices that are going to satisfy our needs and that are in alignment with our values, life will be beautiful. And remember guys, I'm committed to you. How committed are you to yourselves? And if you're committed, guess what? I'll be here on the same bad channel tomorrow. My friends, it's been an absolute pleasure. Once again, thank you so much. Have an incredible day. And I will see as many of you possible tomorrow. Thanks guys, make today winning. Bye-bye.